Hi guys. So today I want to show you my 8 horsepower Briggs engine that I'm going to be working on. Um, I had to bring it inside today because the weather outside is absolutely miserable and raining and windy so uh, not good for filming. Um, so I got this as a job lot of, sort of well kind of almost two whole 8 horsepower Briggs engines off eBay for £25 which is about sort of $35-$40. Um, so I've done a little bit of work on it so far, um, mostly just porting and things like that, and done a bit of cleaning up. So uh, I bought a 28mm Makuni carb off eBay, I think that was about £20. Um, so I ported out the uh, intake for 28 mils, which I'll show you in a bit, um, and then I had to uh, make a new manifold for it. This was um, one of the uh, original sort of upflow uh, carb intakes, you know, the ones that come sort of out and down there with the carb sitting there. Um, so I had to uh, yeah, cut that, moved it around, put an angle. Um, I got someone to weld it, but because it's cast aluminium it didn't work too well, so there's a couple of pinholes in it, so this stuff you can see here is just um, epoxy that I put on to uh, keep it sealed, which should be gas resistant for you know a while. Um, got some pipe from a friend um, to make an exhaust. It's very long at the moment, that's because the that was the length of pipe that he gave to me. So um, I'm going to sort of get it up and running, and then chop it down to sort of how I feel it should be. I know there's sort of various rules for designing exhausts and stuff but I don't really know much about that so I know sort of uh, longer exhausts are good for sort of low end, shorter exhausts are better for top end, I think that's the right way around. Um, so I think I'll just sort of try and get a middle-ish length and uh, go with that. Um, I've got a made a brace for it so it's welded on there and then it's going to have um, a hole at the bottom there so it goes through the uh, mounting hole at the bottom. Um, what else? I'm going to be making a new plate to go over the uh, valve chest there. Um, I'm not entirely sure what to do for that at the moment. I was originally thinking to have a, um, a sort of catch tank coming off that but um, I'm not sure how much these uh, sort of style Briggs engines actually kick out. Um, and the other idea is running a vacuum fuel pump off it, so I'd want to take a line off of that. So it's either you know the uh, catch tank or the uh, pump that we take off that, because you can't really do both at the same time. Um, if anyone has any advice on how to link up a uh, fuel pump to the uh, crankcase pressure then that would be good because I know you can't sort of have any oil coming from that into the uh, pump because that will mess it up so um, I'm guessing I have to sort of mount it remotely and um, work it like that but yeah if anyone knows how much these engines actually kick out when they're running. Um, so far I haven't milled the head down at all. Um, I'll show you inside in a bit but it doesn't actually have a recess at the top of the piston it looks stock still and doesn't look like anyone's um, machined it before but yeah basically it's just flat all on the top and then it's just got the recesses for the valves so I'm not sure if um, it would actually be wise at all to mill it down any further there is some sort of space at the, you know above the uh, valves so it could go down a little bit more but I'm not sure I mean, it's got you know really good compression, so uh, I think for now I'll just leave it and then maybe leave that as a later modification if I feel it's needed. Um, what else? It's still got the uh, stock flywheel and rod, although I've polished the rod to get out as many of these sort of casting imperfections as possible. I know everyone says about billet rods and flywheels and stuff, they are on the way. Um, I'm actually going to be machining my own. Um, also with help from some of my friends. Um, 
out of you know suitable material. Uh, but uh, for now, I'm going to be running it with stock parts and then just not exceed the uh, sort of the the uh, was it th uh, 3600 RPM that it states you know stock. Um, I'll have to. I'm, I'm making a tachometer at the moment, which I should hopefully be able to use with this to uh, measure that. So um, yeah, I'll have to go with that at the moment because. See that's where the governor came out. I've removed all the governor things and I've just plugged that. I uh, tapped the brass sort of tube that goes in through the uh, crankcase there, and I've just put um, a bolt with um, a good few layers of PTFE tape to uh, get it all sealed. Um, it's got points and condenser at the moment. I am on the lookout for a um, electronic ignition magneto for this engine um, but they don't seem to be coming up on eBay too much and I'm not quite sure the uh, serial number for it I mean they're looking about 40 pounds at the moment so that's sixty seventy dollars which at the moment I'm just happy to uh, stick with points and condenser for a while um, so yeah I'll take it apart and show you some of the bits inside so here's what I was saying about the um, engine head. Um, as you can see there's no recess for the piston so um, it's got quite a large sort of space there for the valves and you can see the uh, you know the valves are only covering that small hair at the top there and you've got this sort of section here which should you know give it quite a lot of space but um, yeah I'll leave that for now and uh, see how the compression goes. Um, yeah cleaned it up with uh, of a wire wheel and um, on a Dremel and wire wool and stuff um, as usual it's sort of completely clogged up and black when I got it so uh, it's looking quite nice okay so as you can see here it's um, actually a Briggs IC engine so it's got the uh, cast iron sleeve for the cylinder um, which also means the uh, crank comes with uh, ball bearings on each end, not just the uh, flywheel end, which is good. Um, because of the uh, cast iron sleeve, I wasn't sure about sort of shaving this area here down too much, so where it joins between the aluminium block and the cast iron sleeve. So all I've done really is just sand out the uh, sharp lines that are exposed. Um, I might take it down a little further but it's looking nice and smooth flowing there. Um, I've lapped the valves um, so those are all looking nice and shiny. Um, the hone on the uh, cylinder was still quite good. Um, obviously hadn't been used much since it was last honed so uh, I haven't done anything with that. I've uh, fitted new piston rings because um, the other ones were getting a bit sort of uh, old and worn. Um, I sort of reconditioned the piston because there were some uh, scratches on the outside but um, it wasn't anything too deep so I just sanded those out gently and um, it's looking a lot better. So as you can see I uh, ported out the intake and the exhaust. Um, it was difficult to get into some of the corners so I've had to kind of leave some of those as they are. Um, yeah, mostly the exhaust if you can see in there around sort of to the left and right of the um, valve guide there's a couple of little pockets but um, it shouldn't sort of disrupt the flow too much. Um, so I ported the intake out to 28mm. I can't remember off the top of my head what it was before but it was considerably less and anyone who's worked on an 8 horse will sort of know what sort of size they were before. Um, the exhaust I didn't port out a huge amount, it was already quite big to start with. I just um, took the threads out that were in there because you could either have the option of having sort of a exhaust that used the two mounting holes or it had a thread going in here to sort of screw in one of the mufflers. So I uh, ground out the uh, thread and then sort of blended that into the uh, also you know, took that same diameter through all the way through up to the uh, you know going up into the uh, combustion chamber um, yeah that's about it